Uh, hey guys, I'm Jimmy. Um, I've, uh, I'm glad to be here. This, this is uh, I, my presentation is going to be on like different signature schemes. Um, if you're not familiar sort of with the math and stuff, um, hopefully you can keep up. But it's going to be a little bit on the difficult side to understand what these things are, unless you know at least some of the elliptic curve math. So I just want to give an idea. Who knows what elliptic curve map is? Okay, who's familiar with point addition? Point addition, okay. It's like my students. There's <laughs> like four, four of them in, in this room, they're the ones that are raising their hands. So yeah, just a little plug. If you, if you want to understand this stuff in more depth, I, you can take my class. Or read my book that's going to come out like, probably later this year, if I can finish it. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to talk about Schnorr, Bellarine Maven, or uh, BN, and Musa signature schemes. Um, this is something that, uh, that the core devs have been working a lot on, and, uh, and there's certain interesting properties to each, and I hope to give you guys sort of like a preview of what's coming down the pipe with Bitcoin, because um, these are very much in the spirit of um, sort of what they want to do. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the terminology gets mixed up, so people just say schnorr when they really mean Bellarine Maven or music. So I'm, I'm hoping to sort of give you a clear distinction of what's going on. Uh, <laughs> uh, a better idea, uh, give you a better distinction of what's going on. So let's, uh, let's take a look. All right, so I'm going to start with ECDSA. Who's familiar with ECDSA? Okay, so there, there's a decent number of you. Um, and if you haven't studied ECDSA, it's an elliptic curve digital signature algorithm. This is the signature scheme that's used in Bitcoin right now. The curve is secp 256 k one uh, but there, there's a particular form that ECDSA signatures take. And this is different than RSA and different than EDDSA, but here's more or less how uh, ECDSA works. But the intuition is that you've had this sum, UG plus VP. If you're not familiar with the terminal or symbols or whatever, uh, generally the capital letters are points on the elliptic curve. Um, and the lowercase letters are sort of scalar multiplication. Um, so these are like numbers that are 256 bits, and the capital letters are some point on the curve. And you can sort of do math on them, and they're, it's highly nonlinear, um, and you can do certain reverse and stuff like that. So P equals EG, and this is the same P, G is the generator point. Um, the, the security of ECDSA comes from the fact that if you know E, E is your private key, capital P is your public key. If you know E, you can compute P. But if you know P, you can't compute E. It's, 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 uh, it's asymmetric in that way. And that's, that's what, uh, where the security of everything sort of comes from. Uh, and generally, uh, with this sum, um, UG plus VP, we can't really manipulate that sum unless we know how G and P are related. That is, unless we know E. E is our secret. That's our private key. Unless we know the private key, we can't manipulate this sum. That's at the heart of the CDSA. Um, uh, and it's based on the difficulty of the discrete log problem. Who's familiar with the discrete log problem? OK, yeah, so if you don't know the discrete log problem, it's basically what I said here which is that if you know E, you can get P, but if you know P, you can't get E. That's it. If you know the public key, you can't get the private key, but if you know the private key, you can get the public key. Right? That's, that's the discrete log problem in a nutshell. Anyway, let's uh, just briefly go over the math. Um, here's the verification. You get a signature, R and S. And if you haven't looked at you know, digital signatures before, R, uh, it's always like some R and some S. R usually stands for something kind of random, and S is sort of like the signature part, the, proof, the part where you prove that you know the secret. Um, you have a hash Z, it's something that you're signing, it's the message that you're signing, so you think, you know, it could be a very large message, you hash the whole thing into 256 bits, um, and that's what you then you sign. This is the same for PHP and PGP, 
or anything else. It's you, you have some hash that you're going to sign. And then you have the public key P, right? Because that's the thing that you reveal to everybody else. Now given, given these four elements, R, S, Z, and P, you compute a couple of things. You, you compute U, which is Z divided by S. This is uh, field division. And V equals R divided by S. That's field division. Um, and you get, you get this sum again, Q equals UG plus VP. And as we discussed in the previous intuition part, you can't manipulate this sum unless you know the secret or how G and P are related. And, uh, and more or less, you, uh, you compute it, and if Q's X coordinate is the same as R, the signature is valid. And you might be saying, okay, well, how does that prove anything? Um, the key here is that this R, this sort of random thing, is utilized in the calculation. Okay, so it's sort of like saying, I know what the answer is going to be, and I'm going to use it as part of the calculation. That gives you sort of credibility in knowing, in, saying, in being able to say, I know what the answer is going to be. Uh, I was able to manipulate Q, more or less. And Utilizing R in this calculation and then coming out with Q whose X coordinate is R, that's sort of the magic behind it. And a lot of signature schemes sort of have this property where you start with the with some number and you come back to that same number. And that's that's more or less the verification aspect of it. Um, Signature, the, the actual signing ends up being uh, kind of similar. You know the secret, and uh, what you need to do is select sort of like a second secret or a random number k, and this is why signatures differ every time you sign. It's because you have to choose this random number. But this, uh, this random number k, uh, it, you, you choose it, and kg's x coordinate is, uh, is r. And then you, you do this thing S, which equals Z plus R E divided by K. And it'll become a little uh, clearer why that is in a second. But the signature is R X. It's the same thing. You, you, you uh, figure out what S is, Z plus R E plus uh, divided by K. It's very important that you also make sure that K is truly random, because if you reuse K, you end up uh, compromising your private key. This is exactly what happened with the PlayStation app. That's how they they sign multiple messages with the same key. Um, but that this this is your signature, and this this is a signature algorithm. And the reason why it works is because U G plus V P is U divided by S R divided by S. That's the definition of U and V. And P is the same as um, E times G, right? Because that's that's the public point, and E is the private key. And you can combine the terms, and you get Z plus R E divided by S. And we manipulated S. S equals Z plus R E divided by K, so that ends up being KG. And KG is, by definition, has uh, R as the X coordinate. So it, uh, the, the whole thing works out sort of from a mathematical standpoint. And it, it works because discrete log is known to be hard. That's the assumption that we're making in the CDSA. And, uh, and R is used in the calculation to ultimately produce R again, which, which sort of lets you know that you, you, you are able to manipulate this sum. Okay. I know I went really fast, uh, and if you weren't familiar with the CDSA, that probably confused the hell out of you. Um, this is why I, like even in my class, which goes really, really fast, I take like four hours to get to this point. So uh, the fact that you didn't get it in about five minutes is totally fine. Um, if you do want to know more about this stuff, uh, go take a look at, um, uh, there's, a, there's some videos on Bitcoin Edge where I, did, where I teach some of this stuff. Uh, I think that was from Scaling Bitcoin. So something, something to think about. Anyway. Um, because R was used in the calculation to ultimately produce R, that shows that you know the secret without actually revealing the secret. Which, to me, to this day, the fact that you can do that with this sort of like zero knowledge proof is still kind of mind blowing. But that's that that's how ECDSA works. Um, anyway, hopefully that was that wasn't too fast. 
let's now talk about Schnorr, because Schnorr is very similar to ECDSA, except it's got a couple of differences. So first, instead of using field division, which is actually kind of a very expensive operation from a computing standpoint, we're going to use hashes. And uh, hashes specifically that have pre-image of resistance. That just means that it's very difficult to figure out the pre-image of the hash. Um, like SHA-256 is, uh, it has strong pre-image resistance. There are lots of other hashes that are the same way. Um, and again, it depends on the discrete log problem, but it also depends on the difficulty of figuring out a hash pre-image. Anyway, here's, here's the verification. Instead of little RNS, you're given a point R. Okay? This is a point on the curve, capital R, S. Um, you're still given a message Z and uh, some public key P. And what you have to do is compute Q, which is SG minus hash of R and Z of P. Uh, and, then, and then interpret that as a, an integer so that it's a, it's a scalar and multiply that by P. And the way that ver verification works is that if Q is the same as R, then, then we're done. Right? That's the signature. And once again, we're utilizing R as part of this calculation, and we come out to the same R. That proves that we know the secret. That's, that's part of the zero knowledge proof there, because we know that this free log is R. All right. So how do, you, how do you actually come up with the signature? Um, again, you have a secret E, uh, that's your private key. You have public key P, and you select the random number T. Same setup as ECDSA. But you do something slightly different. You have capital R, which is just KG. Instead of just getting the X coordinate like we did for uh, the ECDSA, we just get the entire point and serialize it or something and let the, let the uh, verifier know. But S is going to be equal to K plus hash of R and Z times E. Again, you have to interpret this as a number. So hash usually gives you 256 bits. You have to consistently do it. Um, but you get this S. And that, that's your signature, R and S. And the reason why this works is because SG minus, uh, the, this is the formula from, um, from the verification, SG minus H of, of the hash of R, Z, P, ends up being SG minus hash of R, Z, and P is the same as EG, right? Because that's a public key, and E is your secret EG. And then you can, you can sort of group the terms together and take out G from both, and you get S minus H of R, Z, and E. And then S has a definition, which is K plus H of R, Z, and E, and these two terms cancel out. And you get KG, and KG was defined as R. So it comes out to the same thing because we specifically made S so that it would come out to the same number. And that's, that's sort of, uh, uh, that's R is used in the calculation of R, and therefore we, knew, we know the secret and we were able to manipulate everything going forward. And that proves knowledge of the secret. So this is Schnorr signatures. It's very similar to ECDSA. The big difference is that we use this hash function. That's, that's not what we use in ECDSA. We use field division. We're, we're now using hashes. And this gives us some unique abilities, including the next one, which is Bill and Naaman. But before I go to that, any questions so far? I feel like I'm using some of you. No? Any questions? Schnorr out of painting. What's that? Schnorr is out of painting. Out of patent. Patent. It used to be patented. Oh, patented. Oh, patented. Patent. 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 Yeah, yeah. Patent. I believe it was at some point, but yeah, it's a it's patent. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on to uh, the second thing, which is Bellar and Naven. Um, and Bellar and Naven uh, is, uh, is based on a paper, um, I think some people wrote from Stanford, I would say. But not surprisingly, it's uh, two people, one whose name is Bellare and the other whose name is David. Um, but basically, it's generalized Schnorr signatures with multiple keys. And this is, this is the, the big thing about it, is that you can aggregate signatures 
which is really cool. You can prove that all of these people signed it with a single signature. And in Bitcoin right now, what you have to do is you have to have a separate signature for each key. With this, you can aggregate all of them, you can have a single signature, and it proves that everybody signed it. Yeah. And so it's the main objective to save space on the blockchain? Is what's the objective of using the signature signature? Yeah, yeah uh, part of it is, is to do that, but there, uh, as you'll see with MUSIC, what you end up getting is some really strong privacy properties, which will be better than, than ECBSA. Yeah, way better. Yeah. So, um, so we're going to be able to aggregate signatures. It still depends on the discrete block problem and hash fee images. But, uh, but let's, let's just go through the verification. Once again, the signature is just RNS. With, with Bitcoin, when you have a multi-sig, you have a bunch of RSs, right? Like you have one set of RS, another, they're, they're a bunch of what, what we would call their signature formats. Um, and if it's like seven of nine, you would have seven signatures. That's a lot because they're usually 32 bytes each for each thing. So that's like, um, you know, 64 times seven or something like that, and their signature has like an overhead of six bytes. So it, it ends up being a lot. You, you still have the Z, and you have a bunch of public keys, right? You have P1, P2, all the way up to PN, and you want to prove that all of them sign this signature. The way we do that is uh, we have to compute this ha the hash of all of the public keys to begin with, and that we're going to call auth L. Then we're going to calculate the C sub I's. We know L, we know the, we know the pub key, uh, we know each pub key, we know R, and we know Z. So we're going to compute a bunch of these C sub I's, okay? Each one for every single pub key. Then what are we going to do? Then we're going to take this kind of large uh, thing, but SG minus C1, P1, C2, P2, C3, P3, all the way. And all the way to the end, and if that equals R, then the message is signed. We used R as part of each CI, and we came out with R, that means every single one of them signed it as part of this. Okay? So how did that work? Alright, so signing, here's, here's how the signing works. Each, each pub key has a secret, right, E sub I. Okay, so there's a private key and a public key. You do the same L thing because every, every, you know, you can share the pub keys without any, any, any uh, anything. Um, and every one, every one is going to choose a case of I. And with the Bellare Maven, if, what what you have to do is sort of like share a hash of this as like round one, and then round two, everyone gets to know R I. Um, but more or less, everyone's going to know R I um, at the end. Uh, like everyone's RI, so you can calculate R. Everyone can calculate R. That's our R. If you just add the points together. And C sub I is going to be the same thing that we, um, we figured out from the previous one, because you know L, you know P sub I, you know R, you know Z. So you can calculate C sub I for yourself and everybody else. And S, S sub I is going to be K sub I plus C sub I, E sub I. So every, every person is going to calculate this S sub I based on the K sub I that they chose, E sub I that they can calculate, and E sub I uh, that, they, that, that they know because that's their secret. Okay? So now they have an S sub I, and it's blinded enough that no one can figure it, like uh, reverse engineer it. <clears throat> and S is just going to be the sum of all the S I's. Right? And that's R and S. That's the aggregated signature. And amazingly, <laughs> It turns out that this will work. Why? Well, SG minus C1, P1, P2, C2, P2, I'm just, I just made it like sum of CI, PI, um, equals, and you remember the definition of S was S1 plus S2 plus S3, so you can do sum of SIG, and P sub I is E sub I G. So you can group the terms together and then you get sum of K, uh, oh, yeah. You could group S sub I was defined as K sub I plus C sub I, E sub I. Um, you can group the terms together, and you'll notice that this and this is going to cancel, and you get the sum of K sub I G, which is the sum of R I's, which equals R. Again, 
you ended up using R in the com computation of C sub i, and you came back to R. Like, you, you started with R, and you used it, and then you came back to that same thing. It proves that every single private key signed it, which is kind of amazing. I can't believe you can do that in, in, in a little bit. Um, and it proves the knowledge of every single secret, not just one of them, but everything, everyone that participated as part of the pub key, or every pub key that was a part of the signature. Um, yeah, so, any, well, so any questions on this? The R was, is the actual coordinate, not just the X values. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the public so point. point. Yeah, so point. X, X comma Y. Yeah. All right. Well, let me let me move on to the most exciting one, and this is music, and this is from uh, Peter Wola's um, blog post. Basically, the intuition here is that we can use Bellari Maven for the signature aggregation, but we can also aggregate the pub keys. Okay. What does that mean? That means instead of telling the validator P1, P2, P3, P4. We sort of combine them somehow and just give them one pub key. And if you can aggregate the signature and aggregate the pub key, you can't distinguish it from a single <laughs> private key. You can have you you have no idea that it was a single private key. It could be many or a few. You can't tell from the validator standpoint. So all right, so a single key can rep represent the entire pub key set. And, uh, and again, this relies on discrete log and hash free images. And the wonderful thing about the verification is that it's the exact same thing as Schnorr. This is the exact same algorithm for Schnorr. Verifier has no idea that it's different. Right? The verifier has that no idea. It's only in the signature construction phase and only uh, amongst the party that's creating the signature that they know that it was actually produced from multiple secrets. As far as the verifier is concerned, it's exactly the same as Schnorr. Right? It's SG minus H of R and Z times P. And if Q is the same as R signature is valid. This slide I literally copied and pasted from the Schnorr one. It's the same. <clears throat> Alright, so how, how can you produce this? Well, here, here's what you can do. Um, so first of all, Bunch of secrets, bunch of pub keys, right? Everyone has their own secret. Um, we're going to do L again. Okay, this is uh, the, the aggregation of, well, we're, we're going to combine all the pub keys to get this L. We're also going to choose a bunch of Ks and figure out all the Rs, right? Everyone has their own K, picks their own K. Um, and R is just going to be the sum of R's, that, that, that much we were familiar with. But P is going to be this thing, and it's the hash of L and P1, P1, hash of L and P2, P2, and so on. And there, there's a good reason why we have to do it this way instead of like P1 plus P2, and it, it involves an attack. But basically, we're going to add this like hashing term to each pub key. All right. C sub i is going to be H R Z. Okay, this might look familiar because we used it in the verification, and we have we, we know R and we know Z. H L P I. That that this this sort of term over here. And that's going to be C sub i. And what you do is S sub i equals K sub i plus C sub i E sub i. Uh, again, if you're if you you as uh, one of the key holders chose the K sub i you know your secret and you can calculate C sub i so you, you, you give everybody S sub i your, your portion of the signature and then the signature aggregation works the same way S is all of those but you have an aggregated pub key you have the aggregated R part portion of the signature you have the aggregated S part of the signature and then the signature is just R S and then the aggregated pub key is P you can't tell the difference, which is kind of crazy. Now, why does this work? And I'll go through the math. Um, Sorry, it's a question on, on the calculation of P. Uh -huh. You mentioned that the the awful nature of way that's calculated mm -hmm. is to prevent a certain kind of attack. Yeah. Can you explain that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So if you. Um, so row key attack. Well, so then, yeah, row key attack has to uh, do with uh, if 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 you're the last person to oh, get the R. Yeah. You, you you have to you have to do that. Uh, it, it it gets a little technical, but yeah. All right, so why does it work? All right, so you have S minus, uh, this is the formula that you calculate and see if it's equal to R in the Schnorr. Um, but you know SG is SIG, like the sum of the SIs. And you know uh, P is the sum of H, L, P, I, P, I, right? That's, that's from the definition. So we can, uh, we can sort of like combine some of the terms and expand some of the other ones. SI is this. Um, and we can move this in here, and P sub i is E sub i g, and you get this thing, and this turns out to be the definition for C sub i, which we're going to take advantage of, and we're going to expand this. So sum of K i g plus C i E i g minus C i E i g. So these two terms cancel, and you get K i g is just R i, and those sum up to R. And it just works. <laughs> Look, looks like sleight of hand, but we've created an aggregate key where you can't make a signature unless you know, uh, unless you all cooperate, right? Which is kind of amazing. You you have this aggregated signature that you can't create, that no individual can create, and uh, and really it proves the knowledge of the collective secret, which is. Kind of a really cool concept, but that's that's the whole idea behind music is that you not only aggregate the signature, but you're aggregating the pub key, so you, you, you have no idea like what who signed it or how it was like sort of combined or whatever. So anyway, any questions on this? Yeah. So instead of using Shamir secret sharing in like you put your private key in multiple locations and then they combine it again. Mm -hmm. Now you put like these parts mm -hmm. in different locations and then combine it together to sign the yeah. for the three months. So yeah, well, if you use Shamir, it, it combines somewhere, and then that private key is somewhere. Some, so, yeah. like, if there's all sorts of attack surface related to that. With this, none whatsoever. Each each individual gets to create their own part, and you never have that aggregated. Even if one person doesn't cooperate, then you know uh, you're you're more or less protected. So are you, you, just going back to what you said earlier, um, mm -hmm. you can't tell the difference mm -hmm. between whether this is being collectively signed or mm -hmm. a regular private key. Mm -hmm. um, like right now on blockchain, you can sort of tell if this is a multi-sig and yes. not. Would that, was that going to change then when people do this? Like, yeah, so I mean, this would have to be like separate version 2 or something, right. version 1, version okay. 2. Um, and they can put this in as part of like a new scripting system right. or enable the new, and it, there's lots of ways to do this. But the fact is that this is, Possible using Schnorr and Beller and Aven and Musig and like sort of, sort of evolve like each one sort of evolve uh, is built on top of the other. Jim? Yeah. Is it is it compatible with M of N? M of N? Yeah. Uh, so you have to do some tricky things with P uh, in order to make that work, but you, it is possible. Yeah. Um, given that it includes. Yeah, um, I, I, I guess it could. Um, yeah, and it's a, it's a tough question to answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so does that allow us to move away from using auto check policy? Um, yeah, it would. It would probably, yeah, probably move us away from auto check policy. It would probably be just auto check or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Has Peter put out any code for this, and is it in any moment test mode? No, I mean, um, I, I don't think it'd be tough to write it up. It's 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 pretty straightforward, right? Um, and uh, and as long as you have some sort of EC library, um, you can you can do the rest. Yeah. The the hard part is just like making sure that the hashing and is all consistent and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, or just use secret sharing. It's possible to like lose one key to like mm -hmm. four or five, but still ten. Mm -hmm. Is something like that also possible here? Yeah, that, that was uh, Damien's question earlier. But uh, yeah, you can do some sort of M of N. You, you have, it, it gets a little tricky in the maths, a little, uh, you know, gets more.
a little more messy, but it's more or less like that. Yeah. So from a user's perspective, the main use case is attacking create a multisig without anybody knowing that this is a multisig. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, especially if you use something like graph uh, you can delegate it to somebody uh, like in, in sort of the next short name case, but the base case you end up being, it, it ends up being like nobody has any idea. It's just none of their business. Um, and you know, there, there was something I think closer to this concept of like threshold signatures uh, that those guys at Princeton put out, but um, I think this one's a little more robust. Yeah. I'm sorry, um, just a thought. I read about confidential transactions. It's similar, right? It's aggregating signatures as well. Yeah, so confidential transactions uh, relies on um, at least uh, the, the one that Greg wrote, uh, relies on um, range proofs. Uh, those tend to be very big. Um, apparently, there's a way to compress a lot of it into bullet proofs. Um, uh, into like 32 bytes or something like that, and it only grows like logarithmically. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it, that's a little bit different, and it, it relies on a different property, uh, namely like that UV UG plus EP thing, where if you where nobody knows how they're related, it, it ends up being like uh, a way to show that one of those is zero, and then but you don't know which one, and so on. It, 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 it's it's. Fascinating, but yeah, I, I haven't read too much into bull, bulletproofs yet, and I know how range proofs work, and that's mostly how they do that confidential transaction. Where are we at now with the direction towards multi sig? Is that in the thought stage? Or are they? Yeah, it's in the thought stage, definitely. Um, and you know, they did uh, put out the paper, and uh, and it's uh, it's like a strict improvement over Bellar and Avon, so it's. Uh, Pretty exciting, I think, even from an academic standpoint. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll 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 see where it like uh, goes uh, from here. Uh, but you know, it's it's a matter of just people implementing it and stuff. And it, there's some questions as to like exactly where this goes. You could make it like a you can enable a new opcode, or you can just go to a new scripting system. But then it's like scope creep, and then. Yeah, there, there are all sorts of considerations like that. It'll be quite some time then before the consensus emerges on how to implement it. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, somebody needs to do the work. Yeah. <laughs> that person usually gets to choose how it's done. Okay. Anything else? All right, thank you. We have a bit more time here before we all head off over to uh, the other venue, Lillian Bloom, which Cliff organizes. Uh, so better hang on to him. Um, awesome t-shirt, so you can you'll always be able to stop uh, to spot him. Um, yeah, keep in touch with the meetup group. There's going to be more uh, dev meetups. We hope to do this like monthly or at least every second month. Uh, but there's also uh, tons of other talks and tons of other social meetups. Uh, so uh, find us around Hong Kong. Uh, find Jimmy Asan on Twitter. Um, and um, catch up with uh, his next talks on, uh, I hope you share them or um, post them on, uh, or come back to Hong Kong. Come by. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see.